I think it's a fantastic question. As we learn more about the world, we understand how interconnected things really are in a way that maybe we didn't suspect. I sat next to, um, on, on a recent flight, I was speaking last week in Sacramento, California, and I sat on my flight next to a gastroenterologist um, who was educating me about the microbiome and some of the things that we're learning about gut health. And uh, it was a fascinating conversation um, I learned more about stool than I would ever want to know and more about the, the about gut health than I would ever want to know. Um, but what was fascinating was he was talking about how at, in his role, he has had to learn about so many other medical disciplines because he's realizing how interconnected everything is. And our careers are the same way. You know, our our contribution to the world is the same way. Um, typically there is, you know, we tend to think of ourselves as like you said, I'm a journalist, right? Or I'm sort of a journalist because I'm doing this podcast. It's very true. There's a kernel of something that is playing out through your journalism, right? Um, but if you want to be a journalist, you do the work of a journalist, which means that you follow your curiosity. You ask questions. Well, you can do that through a podcast. You can do that through a, a direct interview. You can do that through an essay. You can do that in any number of ways, there's some part of you, of your contribution that right now is playing out in the form of, of journalism. The same thing applies to people in the medical profession. Um, you know, what are you trying to do as, as a medical professional? You're trying to make people healthy. You're trying to help them live more productive lives, uh, to be productive members of society, to help them find health and wholeness and, and meaning in what they do. Um, I don't, part of that's going to be your specialty, but part of that also needs to be a holistic understanding of how all of these medical disciplines connect, how they intersect. Um, and then you probably, uh, as a, as a, an individual, not, not you, Victor, but you, the listener probably have some unique perspective because of your combination of passion, skills, and experiences that you bring to that interconnectivity of those disciplines. But we often quiet our own voice. We often listen solely to the voices of others. We quiet our own intuition, which is, by the way, the most valuable thing that we bring to the table is our intuition, our ability to synthesize. Um, we have to train ourselves to bring that intuition boldly and freely to all of these disciplines to ask questions and to not be afraid to have a unique perspective, a unique voice um, in the midst of all of that. And I think if we if we all did that and then we sort of shared what we're seeing, um, I think a lot of these discoveries that we're looking for would be accelerated. But because people retreat to their silos, it's the it's the lack of communication and sort of the the lack of an intersection between a lot of these disciplines, I think, that's causing us to to stall our progress on some of the things that are really important. That's a very powerful answer, my friend, because uh as health professionals or whoever uh, you know, we understand that everything is interconnected, but we don't see ourselves as the connectors, as the interconnectors. Mm -hmm. And we don't see mm -hmm. our curiosities and our different roles bringing about the, 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 uh, a better understanding of those interconnections. Mm -hmm. and, and, and again, it's paradoxical because you are assuming that someone else will connect the dots, but those, but those dots need uh, ways of being in the world that cannot be replicated because there are so many interconnections Mm -hmm. and the and the and the dimensions are so many at the same time that 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 in your singularity with your own, own path of life your own studies your own experiences bring something that no one else can bring to this understanding of the interconnections yes yeah and and sometimes and i just had a conversation with fellow festival speaker uh, Naveen Jain who uh, we were talking about uh innovation from the outside being an outsider Sometimes people, especially my experience, I'm not in the medical profession, but my experience with people in the medical profession is there's such a respect for the science that they're hesitant to, to, to share something that they see or that they think because they don't want to overstep their bounds and they don't want to say something that may not be scientifically accurate. So they don't even want to share an inkling, an insight, an idea, right? Um like, hey, this is interesting that this always happens when this happens. I wonder if there's any connection here. Well, we'll let we'll let the people who study that, you know, deal with that, which is fine. And I think that's a very admirable um, hallmark of the medical profession. And at the same time, 
I wonder how many intuitive leaps we don't make because people aren't sharing those insights. They aren't they aren't publicly talking about it to the point where an ex maybe an expert in that field could say, "Oh, that's really I'd never thought of that." But you know what? You're exactly right. Actually, there is maybe something going on here. I always go back to the idea that um, you know Albert Einstein was not a professional physicist. <laughs> Albert Einstein, as a matter of fact, Albert Einstein was having a hard time finding a teaching job, uh, you know, a professorship. Uh, when he developed, um, you know, the theory of relativity initially, um, and, which was the, I mean, I think the singular greatest intuitive leap in the history of physics. Um, we would have probably arrived there eventually, but it may have taken decades had Einstein not made that intuitive leap. Um, and so I, I just wish that we had the ability and maybe the willingness to, to just share what we're seeing with each other and, um, even if it's a really bad idea, put it out in the world so that other people might be able to build on it. And uh, I, that's what I tell companies all the time. Listen, you probably are thinking something. Your your intuition is telling you something right now that you're not sharing with other people because you're afraid you're going to be laughed at. You're afraid that uh, it's not relevant. You don't have the expertise. You're not the per you're not the right person with the right pl platform to share the idea. We need to create an environment in which ideas flow freely but are selected judiciously. We're, we're, we're free in our sharing of ideas and then we're vigorous in our vetting of ideas. Um, that's the kind of environment that leads to uh, tremendous innovative breakthrough.